there is no heating, electricity, water, uh, gas uh, in, in the city uh, at all, and already more than a week. Uh, it's not possible to repair all the communications because uh, the bombing never stops. There is temperature is uh, below zero, and to people uh, melt snow to have water. The last information I have about my parents, uh, it's that uh, they are alive. Uh, I didn't have contact with them already four days. Yesterday, I get just info that they are alive. It's the only thing I know. This is a city that you grew up in. Your parents, as you say, are still there and you're unable to, to contact them. And with food and water running out, what are your fears? I don't have fears. I have questions for European uh, community, for America, for other countries. Because, guys, a week ago it was war army against army and you helped us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, uh, we, we thank you. We really thank you. But now the situation completely changed. They took 350,000 people in Mariupol in a mousetrap as hostages. And they're going to these people to die from hunger and from dehydration because there is no water in the city. So now we're asking for help. We're asking, close this goddamn sky. And you're answering, we cannot. Okay, but close the, close the sky into humanitarian corridors. Help us to... Uh, get our people out of the cities, our civilians. Because when we started to win on the battlefield, when we stopped the invader, they decided that they will kill our children and our parents. And that's what, what has happened in the end of 30s, beginning of 40s. And we cannot, European society cannot make this mistake once again. I can hear your anger and your frustration with the West, that you're calling for a no-fly zone, and so far they're saying no. What you will answer in 20 years to your children? And where is the line where you will decide when you join this World War III that's already started? Is it the line it's uh, 350,000 people without any supply of water, food and medicine? Because just one mad man uh, decided that he wants to be so. Or maybe this uh, uh, line is uh, a tactical nuke. Or maybe this line is a, a forbidden barrel bomb that was dropped on, uh, dropped on a maternity hospital in Warsaw. You just have to decide when you join, because it's inevitable. And Dimitro, we're not saying where you are currently and, and giving away your location but there have been assassination attempts against your president, President Zelensky. Are you frightened? The Russians have lists uh, of uh, uh, people who they want to eliminate, let's say so. Uh, I'm on this list. Several of my friends are on this list. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really pleasant, but it's uh, some kind of honorable. It's honorable. No, <laughs> I don't know how to comment. The big uh, uh, state Russia, we second, uh, as they say, army uh, in the world, the state wants to kill me. What should I think about it? Mm. Just come and try. We are not going to escape. It's our land. Our children and our parents live here, and we will fight, and we are fighting. Thank you so much for joining us, Dimitro Gurin. It's been a real pleasure talking to you, thank you. And I hope you find some safety and we wish all the very best as well to the, to the people you know in Mariupol, including your parents. Thank you.